Are you confused as to whether or not you should memorize every piece of music you learn on the piano or whether it's still okay to play with the music in front of you? Well, stay tuned. I've got a few ideas of my own and a little research that I've done that might help you decide. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. Now, if you're not already, please remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. All you need to do is hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and it's all done for you. Now I participate in a few online groups, both on Facebook and one on Reddit as well. And it's a topic that comes up very often as to whether or not it's necessary to memorize everything. I'll be honest, sometimes I don't participate in the debate and just sort of watch through with a little bit of a smile on my face as every possible opinion from you can't possibly claim to know a piece of music until you can play it entirely from memory to why bother memorising anything at all, just sight read everything gets expressed. Personally, I think as with most polarising topics, there is no one size that fits all, and there are probably occasions when memorizing is good, and other occasions when why would you want to bother? Let's start by looking at some of our concert pianist idols. Of course, we're very used to seeing them play from memory, but this isn't always the case. I've noticed in a few concerts I've been to over the past year or two, that especially when it's a piece of more contemporary music, frequently the pianist will bring the score onto the stage with them and they'll play from it. In fact, I don't know if you've seen that documentary about the amazing Maurizio Pollini, and he's made many forays into the more contemporary music than, you know, a lot of his peers have done. And you'll notice when he plays this kind of music, he has the score in front of him and he has somebody turning the pages for him. I've linked that documentary in the description below for you so you can catch it for yourself if you wish. And I think secondly, as I mentioned in that video I did about sight reading, if you look at the great pianists, even the likes of Arthur Rubenstein, when they were playing chamber music with other musicians, they generally have the music in front of them. You know, and of course, if that would have in any way detracted from their performance, at their level, they would simply have memorized it. And I guess, thirdly, there will be occasions when a great pianist hasn't actually had the time to memorize a piece of music properly. You know, and I'm thinking typically if they've needed to step in because one of their colleagues has been ill or unable to perform and they've stepped in and performed that program on their behalf. And, you know, if you look on YouTube, you'll find a video of Yuja Wang playing Rhapsody on the theme of Paganini with the score in front of her. Now let's look at it from a completely different point of view. If you take exams or you've taken exams, then the ABRSM is probably a name that you're very familiar with. I mean, there are other exam boards, but the ABRSM is one of the biggest in the world. Now, they give everything from grade one to eight, which a lot of us learn, and then they actually do diplomas after that. So three specific diplomas, plus an extra one that sort of bridges the gap between grade eight and their first diploma. Now, interestingly, when you look at the marking guidelines for this, one of the things that they're very clear about is that if you wish to play from the music, play from the music. You're not required at all to memorize any of the pieces that you present, even at a diploma level. They even go further by saying that you won't get extra marks for playing from memory, nor will you lose any marks for playing from the music. Now, to me, this says an awful lot 
because once you get to the diploma level of ABRSM, you really are now playing at a professional standard. You know, you're, you're getting good enough to be a fully-fledged professional pianist. In fact, probably you already are at this point. However, there will be occasions where memorising music is more than worth the effort. You know, as pianists, I believe that we all need one or two go-to pieces that we're able to play anywhere, anytime, you know, whenever we have the occasion. How often is it that we'll get access to a piano when we're on holiday or something like that and be able to play or have friends say, oh, play something for us. And of course, if you've got nothing that's in your memory and you don't have your music with you, then it's an opportunity lost. And then, of course, there are always those passages of music that really, to be honest, you need to memorise them to be able to play them because your hands are moving so quickly across the keyboard from end to end that you'll never manage to keep your eyes on the score and your eyes on your hands at the same time. And then, of course, I think it's worth mentioning a school of thought that, to be honest, by some is upheld really, really passionately, that unless you've memorised a piece of music, you can't really do it justice as you need to be able to focus entirely on the performance and the dynamics and everything else without trying to read the notes. And I guess that when you're playing a piece of music that's right on the limit of your technical ability, then this is probably very, very true. Interestingly, you might think that if you're playing with the music in front of you, it's because you're not at all playing from memory. However, this actually probably is not the case. I read a very interesting part in Alan Rusbridge's Play It Again, An Amateur Against the Impossible, where he spoke to a top neuropsychiatrist who said that in actual fact, for the most part, even with the music in front of us, we're still playing from memory. It's just that we use the music for visual clues to help jog our memories as we go along. When I first saw this, I have to admit that I thought, oh, that sounds a little bit odd. However, I started to think about, for example, my experience of playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, the slow movement. Now, this is something I've played since I was a teenager, yet to this day, I can't play it from memory. I've never been able to play it without the music in front of me. Yet, when I thought about it carefully, for the most part, I'm not really looking at the music. I mean, if anything, I'm, I'm sort of taking a, a, a cue from it. So I'm taking a bass note, and from that bass, then maybe two, three, four bars will flow perfectly naturally from memory without me thinking twice about it. You know, in that beautiful ascending part where you've got those diminished chords, again, I probably just look at the first note of the chord and the rest comes out from memory. And therefore, with this in mind, what I'd be inclined to say is that I'm not actually really reading the music. Yes, I'm relying on the music to remind me every now and then of what comes next, but the 99% of my brain is perfectly free to focus on the interpretation and spend very little time thinking about the actual notes themselves. So on balance, why beat yourself up about playing with the music in front of you when you play? Some people, um, you know, probably I'd include myself here, are fairly lucky that things get into our memories relatively easily, especially if I've needed to practice something for more than a month. But for others, it's a real struggle. And, you know, as I pointed out, if the ABRSM doesn't think you're a better pianist from being able to memorise something, then why would you necessarily always put yourself through this pain? Of course, that said, as we pointed out, there are a couple of occasions, like if you have a party piece you want to be able to play at the drop of a hat, where it's well worth going through the additional pressure of memorising a piece of music. But that doesn't have to be every piece of music that you learn. Type yes in the comments below if you think we should memorise everything, and no if you think we don't need to memorise everything. If you're not already, then please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. 
click on that little bell icon and then you'll be notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.